desolation. Now, it already happened before, but he's saying it's going to happen again. So it has to be a temple, it has to be a Jerusalem, it has to be in Israel, back in the world, all that so, or the, or the second part of it. But another foreshadow. You see a revelation that in the end times, as in Hanukkah, there is a spirit of desecration. A spirit of Antichrist is a spirit of that which desecrates what is holy, profanes what is holy, and sanctifies what is profane. He slaughters a pig. He's saying the temple is going to be, I'm going to desecrate the temple, but I'm going to make that, that the pig's blood as holy, which was an abomination. So what it means is that in the end times, you'll see that the holy, things, the holy things are treated increasingly as profane. The word Jesus, to say Jesus in the media, is almost treated like a curse word. You're not supposed to say it, unless you're speaking against him. In public, there's kind of a hush about bringing up God. It used to be that curse words were taboo, but now profanities are more and more in the air. But the holy things are more out of the air. The holy things are being treated as a profanity. And ma same things with marriage, all those things, desecrated. Never before in history has the name or image or likeness of Jesus been used for comedy uh, in, in mainstream culture. Except in the last few years, actually Jesus has been used as a, as a prop for comedy. And God himself, both, used together at, in comedy, in cartoons. Just recently, the Smithsonian Museum the repository of American values, for the first time decided to have a gay exhibit, which featured a picture of a crucifix, the figure of Jesus, being crawled all over by ants. Interesting, what's the connection? Why would an exhibit of gay themes have such hostility towards Jesus? Because it's spiritual. Make no mistake about it, it's not neutral. It will war against the faith. It's already doing. Can you imagine a museum, an American mainstream museum, featuring ants crawling over an image of Muhammad? They would never do that. Or over an icon, a leader of gay advocacy would never do it. Government funds have sponsored photographs of a crucifix submerged in urine, the defiling of the holy by tax dollars. On the other hand, the idol of the temple, the worship of the beast, the worship of the vile, and so you see in the beginning, as we head to that day, the culture is increasingly worshiping or celebrating what is vile or immoral. Antiochus sought to change the times and calendars. So the Antichrist will. In America, Sunday was always a traditional day of gathering together for worship. Stores were closed. They were called the Blue Laws. Now Sunday, and I'm not you know, it's not so much about that. I'm just telling you something that this is representing. Sunday is no longer that. Sunday is a day of uh, any store that can open, opens so much so, so throughout much of the country. For commerce, there are American market, there are marketplaces open 24 hours a day. And this might be a convenience, but it says something else. It's crowding God out. Banning the mention from Messiah. You have Christmases and you can't say the name of the one who it's about. I remember growing up in public school, and this is after prayer was removed and all that. Nevertheless, I remember being in elementary school taking French, and I was going around, and if I knew today, I would take Spanish, but I took French because my mother said, take French, it's a nice language. So, but we used today, we'd go to class to class singing Christmas carols in French. I'm Jewish singing Christmas carols in French. And they're not, and now, I mean, this is, this is, and now, you know, that, now they're trying to avoid anything. You can't even mention it. It's the winter holiday. The winter holiday, recently, listen, we know he wasn't born now, but that's not the point. It's what it represents here. The winter holiday, what, since what are we celebrating? The feast of frostbite? What are we celebrating? <laughs> the winter solstice, making pagans out of children. It's no accident. The same culture that seeks to take Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua, out of Christmas it's the same that also kills unborn children and desecrates marriage. It's no act of the war against Christmas. It's just another battle in the same war, which is not, which is more, more than, it's bigger than this. In the end times, as it, in the time of Hanukkah, it will be, it will be a time of a, a people abandoning faith, abandoning truth, abandoning what has always, human nature, to make people, you know, and the Antiochus, symbol of the Antichrist, try to make people forget their faith. Now that might have been okay for the pagans. It was one pagan thing to another, but not for Israel. 
But so there is a spirit now in the world, and there are forces in the world to make you forget your faith, to forget the Bible, forget the Lord. One is to drive him out of culture so it seems like it's an alien presence, to make believers forget what holiness is. I mean, even in the churches, some of them, maybe. To make us forget what purity is, or even replace God with money in the name of God, it becomes a worship of money. To make people forget what marriage is, what sound, what man is, what children are. The account of Maccabees goes on. Not long after that, the king sent an Athen Athenian senator to compel the Jews to forsake the laws of their fathers and cease to live by the laws of God. So the spirit of the Antichrist, even now, is active in the world to make you forget and forsake the ways of God, to cease to live or even speak the word of God. The laws that remove the Bible from school, prayer from school, the Ten Commandments from public view, the name of Messiah from the public square. I can't tell you how many people from here have come to me and said, on their jobs, I'm, I'm facing persecution for just lifting up the Lord in conversation. Or we are being forced to go to classes. This is not school, these are adults. We are forced to go to re-education classes to, be, to advocate homosexuality. There are forces, things that would never have been questioned before. The media, more and more will not speak of God as God, but the Christian God or the God of this or the God of that. And the Christians, not we Christian, it's the Christian separate group. There's a move now to replace B.C. and A.D. with B.C.E. and C.E. What is B.C.E.? Before the common era. And A.D. with C.E. the common era. What lunacy? What spiritual, cultural, civilizational, schizophrenic lunacy? Why is it B.C.E.? Because it's clearly trying to erase B.C. Why is it called common era? Because they, need, because they needed a C to match the C of the Christ to take it out. It's all a sham. What on earth was common? What's common about this era? The last 2,000 years are common? What on earth does that mean? The year 1 BC before it was uncommon? What is that? So all the, cal wait, so all the calendars in the world changed at the first century because it was common? Because of common, the calendars changed? Suddenly everything became common? And so we got to change the calendars because it's common. That is so hypocritical. And lunacy, schizophrenic, cultural lunacy. There's only one reason you have a change of dates. And that's because you have the one who was so uncommon, he changed the world. He changed history. Deal with it.